Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Dan and today we're talking about filling the gap. I hope I'm, I hope I'm not out of focus. If I am, I'm sorry. I'm shooting this by myself. What is the gap? What I perceive the gap of is actually off of Dare to Share, which I know you guys are probably thinking, Dan's just a Dare to Share fanboy. He never shuts up about them. And you'd be right, because I am a fanboy, because they do such good work and they have such a good focus that we all should have. Now they have a thing called Gospel Advancing Ministries and they call it GAM and it inspired me because I was trying to think about what do I need to do for you all multipliers out there? How do I work to make you guys warriors for Christ? And so I began to think of like Gospel Advancing Ministries, God Gospel advancing people. Gospel advancing people to be a gospel advancing person specifically. Pursuing God's kingdom and to glorify him in everything they do. I began to think about this and I began to think how do I best describe to you guys a person who fills the gap is. Now the gap is everything between us and God. Now there's a lot of things between the church and God sometimes, which I know seems like, wait, how's that possible? It is, trust me. And so there's a gap between us and God. And there's not a gap between the people of God sometimes where God God is and all those people in between who need to be reached for the Father. To fill the gap, what we're trying to do is become people who are relentlessly focused on the gospel. Yeah, this has really been coming into fruition in my life for a while now. I remember thinking it and looking at my church and thinking all these things they were doing wrong, all these things that they needed to do better because they were sitting back and letting stuff happen and I just got so angry. But what I began to realize, I was mad all the time, but I wasn't doing anything about it. I wasn't doing anything to fix it other than talk about it. And many of us in the ministry or many people who are pursuing God find ourselves in the same situation where we get all high on this and we get talking about what God's doing and then we sit back and we talk about, oh, well, we can't do it because of these people. You know they say when you say you're pointing to one finger, you're pointing all those back? Well, it's very true in the situation. But sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where we think we have got it figured out and we know what we need to do to success but people won't get on board with us. But there is one person in this world you can change and that's how we fill the gap. You. You are the person who can say, I'm done being this normal person around the corner talking about revival. Revival starts with one person filling the gap. One person saying, God, I will go. Here am I, Lord, send me. And that's where it starts completely, is you as a person saying, I'm going to pursue God right now. The Gospel Advancing Ministries, they, they have seven values. If you want to check that out, I'll link to some stuff in the description down below. Check out this stuff, guys. It's incredible. There's literally no sponsorship involved here. And they've affected my ministry so positively, and therefore I want them to affect you. As I think about being a Gospel Advancing person, I began to look at these seven values, but the three that I thought were most applicable to us are these. Number one, intercessory prayer fuels it. You know, we find ourselves getting mad about a lot of things. We find ourselves seeing a lot of need around us too. But what we don't do in those moments is go to God about them. We find ourselves angry, yet we don't go to the one person who can do something about it. June and I were preparing to get married. We, we, we took marital counseling. We went through, we sat down with each other and we talked about our once and did, uh, not once, about how our marriage would need to be structured to glorify God best. And as we went through that whole time, one of the biggest things that came up was that you you have to love this person for who they are because you can't change them. In fact, the more oftentimes we put, try to change someone, the more we push them away. I looked at that situation, and I think it's the uh, same thing applied here. The only person I can change in this world is me. I see a problem, I'm the only person that can do that I can have, that I can make do something about. Sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes it seems impossible. That's where intercessory prayer comes in. We need to become people who aren't just sitting around talking about prayer every day, pouring into our lives, pouring it out to God at the altar saying, God, go before me for this person. God, bring the people to me. Prepare me, God. I'm not talking to God, but I don't know how to do anything. God's the only one that's going to do it. Number two, this is sometimes one of the hardest and most uncomfortable ones to do. We must be evangelistically focused. A relational evangelism is one of the biggest ways to seeing the gap filled. It's building relationships with the focus also of, of sharing the gospel with every person you come in contact with. We sit back, guys, and we talk a lot about sharing the gospel and sharing our faith, but how many times times a week, how many times a day, how many times a month, how many times a year do you share your faith? How often do you go around and you talk to someone about what God's doing in your life specifically? If the answer is not many, then, then there's an issue there. There's something that needs to be fixed. We have to be relationally focused on sharing the gospel with as many people as we can because life is short. So we must step back and be the people who say every day, every moment is the moment. Every day you wake up, you're going on a mission trip. That mission trip is your life. You may be sitting back and say, Daniel, I don't have enough faith for that or I don't know enough or I don't have enough knowledge, well, what's growing it for you now? What's changing that equation right now for you? Is it more church? Is it more more Bible studies? Is it more discipleship? Is it more all those things you have right now, you have the time to do? Are you doing them? Are they growing you? Your faith will become real when you 
go out and you need it. That was one of the best things I got from Greg Steer when I talked to him. I've talked about it before, but he literally just said, I was like, dude, how do I do this? How do I make this stuff happen? He said, just do it. And that has become my mantra, just do it theology. You want to see God glorified? Start with you and start doing it. You want your faith to be real? Start sharing it. Start needing it. The last point we're looking at specifically today, biblical outcomes and goals drive it. Now, this is one of the ones that's most true in my life right now. I can tell you this 100%. That, that following Christ isn't what I want to be always. Following Christ is not always the victory that I want to win. It's not always the way I want to, not, it's not always the time I want to win. It's, and oftentimes that causes me to stop and stutter, like right here on my channel. Three years, nearly 300 videos, just under 400 subscribers right now. I the world success when there's people who have 50 million subscribers, i.e. The reality is that you look back and you think, Daniel, you're very unsuccessful. And a lot of times, like today, whenever I didn't have a vlog, this stuff gets you down. A lot of times when you start looking at the world and you're thinking, man, compared to all these other things, I'm so unsuccessful. But when you take a second, when you pour yourself into what God's doing, and you think about what He desires for our lives, all of a sudden, victory becomes so much more clear. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to be that person on the battlefield who has been fighting all day long, who's been battling and warring it out, and the battle is nearly won and I give up. I don't want to be the person who fights my whole life, and then just because God doesn't come through at the exact moment I want Him to, I give up. Victory is a hard-fought daily battle. But Jesus is coming, and He will be victorious. I don't know about you, but when that day on that battlefield, I want to be on his side. Begin to be looking at how can I be a person who doesn't just talk about the gap, but who does something about it. Who's a gospel advancing person. I appreciate you guys checking out the video so much. In my quick 20 second wrap up here, I'm going to just tell you about a couple quick things. First off, check out our vlogs. We do them every day. We also have our Patreon campaign. Guys, YouTube is hitting hard right now. They're smacking us down. My revenue has just plummeted. Not that there was a lot in the beginning, but it is really, really beginning to be affected by this too. And last thing, final thing, subscribe to the channel. Click this little ball right here, guys. I appreciate you so much checking out the video. My name is Dan. God bless, and I'll see you next time.